All right, friends, appreciate y'all being here today. This is Brother James Lyman, Temple Baptist Church of GMA. Merry Christmas to those who are celebrating it uh, this time, this day. I know friends in other countries sometimes celebrate it by our standards yesterday and probably some tomorrow. I would like to discuss with you, well, first of all, hello, and thank you for my friends from Bible Baptist Temple of GMA allowing me to uh, the privilege of doing these lessons. This is a cult seminar, and um, today we'll be discussing Church of Christ. Uh, again, I want to encourage you to uh, pray for Bible Baptist Temple of GMA and the other churches in the Philippines. Uh, tremendous ministry there. Uh, by the way, I'm doing this in America tonight. Tomorrow morning it will be uh, for the uh, Friends of Bible Baptist uh, uh, Temple of GMA. So, Hopefully you all had a good Christmas. Yours should be over by then. Uh, but uh, pray for that ministry there. Pray for those that are involved in leadership, the ministry that goes out from there, uh, much work being done online as well as locally. So please be with them and pray for Bible Baptist Temple of GMA. And also pray for believers around the world. Uh, things are, uh, you know, no matter what, they're getting closer to the time of Christ and so uh, let's pray. Let's really seek between now and the first of the year, wherever we're at, to uh, consider what the Lord would have us to do in 2024. Who knows, maybe he'll return before then. Amen. But I do want to encourage you to just stop and consider uh, your evangelism for next year uh, and what you plan on, and your ministries, whatever you have. So again, encourage you to give out gospel tracts. Uh, very, very strongly, and a witness for our Savior. Amen. So uh, we're going to open the Bible uh, in just a moment. Uh, we're going to be looking at a lot, a lot, a lot of references today. We are dealing with a group that's not normally called a cult, but by biblical definition, they, uh, they're they a false religion at the very least. But I thought it was very important to include uh, this group called Church of Christ, also known as Disciples of Christ, uh, in our time of uh, looking at God's Word here and looking at uh, false religions and cults around the world. Next week, we will be doing uh, we will be doing Islam. So I know many of you will be excited about that. So let us uh, pray, and always a good thing to do, amen. Hope you're having a good day today. What a blessing to be saved today. Uh, it's one thing to expose error. It's another thing to expose error and have the truth of God's word and uh, the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. So as we have it, let's give it out. Amen. Let's give that free gift away. So uh, give out the message of the gospel. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us now. Thank you for your goodness. I pray that you'd encourage us, strengthen us, uh, help us, Lord God, as we open your word, as we consider a lot of things about this false religion, and just pray that you'd help us to be uh, light and truth to them. I pray you'd help us have compassion as it's just another form of darkness. We we would encourage, Lord, it's certainly compassion uh, to those that are uh, involved in deep sin, the people in the bar rooms and so forth. But yet the same darkness is there for those that are in false religion. So I pray, Lord God, you would use us uh, as we deal with these people and uh, pray, Lord, also you'd help us to be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you through a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, that we would boldly proclaim Christ, and also, thirdly, that we would know what your word says uh, in order to refute those involved in this darkness. So we thank you for your goodness. Pray be with us, encourage us, and strengthen us again. Thank you for the goodness of God. We thank you for salvation through Christ. Uh, what a blessing, Lord. We cannot boast about our baptism as the Church of Christ does, but we can boast about you in the finished work of Christ on Calvary. We thank you and ask you to be with us. Give me clarity of thought and mind. Pray you be with us in Christ's name. Amen. All right. So uh looks like uh Faith said hello. Good morning. Happy holidays, Brother James. Thank you so much. Hope you are doing well. So we're going to look at a lot of things, Faith. And we do want to start out with uh, what answers most false religions. Hello, Michelle. Uh, said good evening, Brother James. Amen. Uh, hope you're doing well, my Australian friend there. I call her the Australian evangelist. Amen. She doesn't preach, but she loves evangelism. So please pray for her. In fact, the tracks I just showed uh, are ones that she makes up. Amen. So um, so I do want to, to look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 that answers 
almost every false religion and heresy that's out there and every confusion. It's a very common verse. Most of you that know me know I do go to this very, uh, very commonly. But this one verse tells why the Church of Christ has the problems that they do. And so their main thing, now there's a lot of different things about them. There's actually some good things about the Church of Christ. There could be good things about a glass of pure water, uh, especially with lemon in it. But when you dip a little bit of poison, it's no longer good. And that's the problem with these false religions, is that there's some truth to what they say, uh, maybe their methodology and so forth. Uh, I happen to agree with some of the methodology of a local uh, Church of Christ, but their erroneous view on water baptism and salvation being an essence of works is just that poison that's needed to make it not of God, but of Satan to blind the eyes of them that believe not. So the verse I want to look at briefly is Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Uh, it tells us, well, actually, I'm going to look at a different verse here. Uh, look at, with me, if you would, at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. So I'm going to read both of these. So 3.16 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So the whole Bible is inspired, God's word, amen, his preserved word, and yet... It's very important that as we look at the Bible being for us, for correction, instruction, and righteousness, uh, and so forth, for doctrine, that we also apply 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Because frankly, I could look at verses right now and say, well, if you want to be saved and do, you know, have eternal life, then you would have to keep the law, or you would have to uh, be, to be justified, be circumcised if you're a male, that is, and, uh, you know, different things out there. So it's important that as we understand all of God's word is for us. It's from Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. It's God's word. Amen. It is not all to us. And so as we look at 2 Timothy 3.16, and then look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, look what it says here. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now I'm going to try not preaching here. The problem is with modern Christianity is that we don't study. We nod our head, we go to the pews, and we nod our head when the preacher says something, and we don't study. And that is a command from the Word of God, and, and the reason why we have so much confusion, so much heresy, so much false religion, even so many believers get involved in, uh, getting involved in all these wrong views, is that they're not studying. Amen? Uh, listen, there's a lot of tremendous preachers around this country that I love and over history that I've learned from, those that are not with not here but with the Lord now, those from decades or even centuries ago. But those preachers are not my authority. The, the Bible college that I went to is not my authority. And I'm going to say this, some of you are going to get your feathers ruffled, that's not my intent. But just because it says Baptist, the church, or they say they're a Baptist, they are not my authority. Amen. Now, I'm a born-again Bible-believing Christian. I attend Baptist churches because I believe they are closer uh, to what is preaching the truth out there today. There are some without the Baptist name that preach the truth. Amen. Some of them probably a little closer than some of the Baptist brethren I know. But it says here, study to show thyself approved unto God. Isn't that what we're looking for? Not approved unto self, not approved unto our denomination, not approved unto a friend, a, a loved one. Uh, a, a professor at Bible college, but approved unto God. Amen. And then it says this, a workman. See, that's why most people don't study. It takes effort. It takes some time to crack open a Bible, get a strong concordance. Uh, if you want to Google this or that, whatever, look at a, a, a dictionary, look at a Webster's 1828, look at, you know, to, to crack open a Bible, get your pen, your notebook out, uh, and, and take notes and study. That's why most believers are there where they're at today. And that's why many people that are not saved get involved in false religious groups like the Church of Christ because they, they, they are susceptible, because they don't know the Word of God, they are vulnerable, because they don't take the time to be a workman and study themselves. They are vulnerable to these false teachers. So 
It says here, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So again, this th- that concept, that view of rightly dividing the word of truth, realizing that the whole Bible is for us, but not all of it is to us. Yes, it's all inspired. I'm not refuting that. But that it's all not to us. Again, you look at Old Testament passages about the Sabbath, not written to us, they're written for us. Amen. So looking at Israel and the church, looking at the passages, who the books are written to and so forth will be a tremendous help. And so rightly dividing the word of truth. So we're going to deal with a little bit of the history, not much, but I want to deal with a lot of things concerning Church of Christ. So they're, they're, they are <coughs> autonomous churches. They brand themselves as not denominational, but at the same point, if somebody from Church of Christ moves to a different city, guess what they look for? A Church of Christ. Whether they want to say so or not, it's a denomination. The things that stick out, well, let me just say this. Generally, they're run by elders, which there's some scriptural basis for. Amen? First Timothy chapter 3, Titus chapter 1, and so forth. Uh, Acts chapter 20, I believe it's 22, uh, 23, 21, uh, but about a plurality of leadership. Uh, so they're autonomous, uh, not unlike, uh, unlike let's say, the Southern Baptist Convention. So there's a lot of good points there, amen? Michelle just said that's right. All right, somebody at least agrees with me, amen? Um, but as we consider what's different about them, they did not come into existence until the 1800s. Alexander Campbell uh, and Thomas Campbell basically started them, and that's why the group is generally called the Campbellites. Now, that is a term that they generally are going to find offensive. They consider themselves to be the ones who have the truth when nobody else has it. Amen. I'm glad that as a born again, Bible believing Christian, I can say I have the truth because it's in the word of God. Amen. Uh, And they manipulate verses. They ignore verses. They corrupt verses. They pervert verses. So they were started in the 1800s. Again, when a lot of during what's called the restoration movement, And Alexander Campbell, with some Baptist history, came to the conclusion that water baptism is necessary for salvation. So generally, the Church of Christ is known for two things. One, primary thing, that water baptism is necessary for salvation. And I'm going to go through enough verses here and explanation, again, the the emphasis being the verses, that there should be no doubt in any, any hearer's mind, any listener's mind, that water baptism is not necessary for salvation. The other thing they're known for is not having musical instruments in their church. Uh, and so they want to emphasize so much that they're a cappella uh, groups and they don't allow music. They believe music is uh, musical instruments, let me say that, are forbidden. And, uh, and it's interesting. You cannot come to that conclusion from the Word of God, even just regarding New Testament assemblies. But it's, an, it's another one of those where there's a form of self-righteousness because we don't do certain things. Uh, again, Baptist brethren, uh, some have been guilty of that as well. We're, we're, we're self-righteous. We, we're righteous because we don't dress this way or we don't have long hair, something I haven't had to worry about in a long, long, long time. Amen. Uh, but we need to be careful not to have that spirit. Amen. Uh, so it's interesting. I'll just encourage you. If you have CDs or music you listen to that's a cappella, could very well be from Church of Christ, and they're not saved. They do not believe the gospel. They, they, they believe water baptism is necessary. And I want to say a word before we look into many, many, many verses. If you're listening, if you're under the sound of my voice or you're watching this, if you in any way are trusting your water baptism to save you, then the Bible would say you are lost because in a sense you have rejected the gospel. Now what Campbellites, Church of Christ, Disciples of Christ, different names, what they teach is that you may have faith in Christ, but until you get that immersion in water, you are not regenerated. Now that phrase is called baptismal regeneration. Some of these people are sincere, and they're, but they're not studying enough. If you study, I'm going I'm to just throw this out. If you as a born-again Bible-believing Christian just study what your favorite preacher says, and I'm going to even throw this out, 
or what your denominational leaders say. If you're just studying from them and their commentaries, you're prone, you're vulnerable to error because the authority is not your denominational preacher and I'm including independent Baptists. Your authority should be the word of God, amen? And so it's imperative if you want the truth to, to study out what the Bible says. I don't use a lot of commentaries. If I get stuck on something, uh, pray about it. I'll look up, uh, you know, what the Bible or what what a commentary might say online or or something like that. Nothing against commentaries. It's no different than a preacher teaching from, uh, you know, at at your Sunday school class or, or church. But remember, those should all be funneled through this book. Amen? So... So basically, Church of Christ, those are the two primary areas we're going to deal with water baptism. And we're going to spend most of our time, if not all of it, dealing with water baptism. So I got water baptized <coughs> right after I got saved, probably within a month or so. Now, you got to remember, I was a lost kid, lived like the devil, didn't want anything to do with God. And I had a man put his, some of you are tired of hearing this, I had a man put his finger in my chest, said I was wicked and going to hell. He was right. I was a member of the Mormon Church. This man showed me all the errors, showed me for about two hours or so the errors of the Mormon Church from their own publications, from the Word of God. Gave me the gospel, told me that, and I made a profession a while back, uh, a while after that. But I didn't get saved till months later because I understood here that Christ died for me, but I never trusted Him as my Savior, and so uh, I got water baptized, and it was a powerful time to me. I, I mean, don't you just want to sometimes go back to that time when you got saved, where you didn't know anything, but you knew Christ died for you. You knew he saved you, you know, faith. You knew he saved you. Dan, if you're listening, you knew he saved you. Michelle, you knew he saved you. Do you sometimes I just want to go back to that and think, boy, I wish I didn't know anything, but I remember my Jesus paid for my sin and gave me everlasting life and he changed me. And so I got baptized. I'm telling you, it was powerful. It did not do anything to save me. If I didn't get baptized, I'd still be going to heaven. But it was a public declaration of what Jesus did to this guy. Amen. This old sinner saved by grace. So as we look at baptism, please keep in mind. Amen. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Not thank you, Jesus, and baptism. I tell these guys, I I had a guy at Walmart one time. And uh, Walmart's a great place to witness, by the way, just to be discreet. But so I'm there at Walmart, and and I think it was raining a little bit, which is ironic. And I roll the window down to give this guy a track. And he said, oh, I'm Church of Christ. Now, he didn't say I'm saved. He didn't say I'm a Christian. He said, I'm Church of Christ. And I said, sir, and we talked a little bit. And I said, sir, Jesus paid it all. He does not need your help. Amen. So I I just want to encourage you as you're listening, both for your own and for there may be somebody listening who says, wait a minute, I I, I do trust my baptism somewhat. Don't you have to be baptized? If, if, If that's the case, then I encourage you to come to Christ by faith alone. Amen. Uh, and, and it's called believers baptism for a reason. Amen. I was witnessing to a woman at work, um, and it's ironic the way it worked out, but somebody had asked me how I witnessed the Roman Catholics. I was telling them somebody else came in the break room and they had brought up, uh, when I said baptism doesn't save you, this, this woman's jaw dropped and I ended up witnessing her. She got frustrated. She got upset. Right after that, she went to her position and somebody left a gospel track there. So I think it was just somebody who was passing by. I don't even think it was a staff member. And uh, so she she basically read the track and at the end it said about trusting Jesus as your Savior. She goes, well, I believe that. But she said this. She said, but I know, but I also believe you got to be baptized and do good works just to make sure you're saved. Folks, if you believe that, you're not saved. And we need to reiterate, you know, we, we, we go by people all the time. If you do any evangelism and you say, are you saved? And people say yes. And then we don't proceed to find out what they're trusting in or who they're trusting in. So rightly divide the word of truth. I mean, we're going to look at a lot of verses. Amen. Uh, a lot of verses. So uh, this is also being recorded on audio. Uh, and this will be up if you want to copy this from the website. But we're going to look at a lot of things. So 
Uh, look at Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. We're going to look at some of the verses that they bring up as well. But Titus chapter 3. One good solid rule for studying the Bible is to not let unclear ver- to not let clear verses be corrupted or confused. Let me say that by unclear verses. So when a verse is clear and it's taken in context and it's rightly divided, you can hold on to that uh, like you can uh, this gospel track. Amen. But what people want to do is they want to take unclear verses and they build their doctrine around those unclear verses. And at, the, and at the same time, they're ignoring the clear verses. It should not be. So we're going to look at some very powerful passage here. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Uh, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. So we're dealing with water baptism. Is it necessary to be saved? Uh, and again, the majority of people that hold that do not study their Bible for themselves. They're, a wor- they're not a workman. Therefore, they will be ashamed at the great white throne judgment because they've trusted their works. Uh, but also uh, people that just listen to somebody else. Amen. So not by works of righteousness, which we have done. Is water baptism something that you physically do? Yes, it is. It certainly would be included in a work of righteousness. Now, Church of Christ wants to talk everybody out of that. Be firm on the word of God. Amen. When you do with any group, cult, false religion, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Baha'ism, Hinduism, whatever, stick with the word of God. Amen. And again, I encourage you to open the Bible, let them read it. Amen. So, Is it a work of right? If I said you had to pray Hail Marys, would that be a work of righteousness? Yes. If I said you had to to perform the sacraments, would that be a work of righteousness? Yes. Water baptism, a work of righteousness, not by works of right. Why does Paul write this? Do we understand? Do we, do we, I'm sure we do, but do we fully comprehend that this is God's book inspired, uh, the Holy Spirit of God inspiring uh, men to write what God wanted them to write. Amen. <clears throat> so, uh, not by words of righteousness, which we have done. So it's written because the Lord knew that there was going to be people out there. And it was very quickly after, uh, the word was completed, uh, that people were going to trust in their own righteousness to some degree. This is according to his mercy. He saved us. You know, when you have mercy upon somebody, it's because they need it. I needed mercy, amen? I uh, named my, my baby, my, my uh, 22-year-old Mercy, amen? Uh, according to his mercy, he saved us. He saved us. He gave us everlasting life. Saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, not the water of baptism. Isn't the word of God great? Amen? Not the washing of baptism. Folks, baptism does not clean the outside. Amen? Let alone the inside. Uh, And renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Uh, What a powerful passage. So again, we're going to be familiar with some of these. Some of these you may not. If anything, it will reinforce what the scriptures teach. So, uh, and and we're going to look again at some that you may not be familiar with. So Ephesians chapter 2, again, we're familiar with that. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So here's what the Church of Christ will do. I don't know if you've dealt with a lot of them. There's only about 2 million Church of Christ members throughout the world. The majority of congregations and people are in the United States of America. But saying that, you might be in Africa and run across one tomorrow. Who knows? But if it's a gift, if I say, and I do it all the time when I, when I have a track. So, um, you yeah, know, I'll, I'll say... If I give you this, uh, this gospel track, and normally I don't say gospel tracks, people don't know. If I want to give you something to read, sir, about Jesus Christ, uh, what do you have to do for this to be yours? Now, they're looking for some theological answer, usually simple. All you have to do is reach out and take it. So I'll say, okay, show me, and they'll take it. Say, okay, what if I tell you you had to mow my lawn for a week? Would it be a free gift? No, it wouldn't. Why? Because you have to earn it. So Church of Christ will say this, oh, no, no, it's not works. It's not something you have to do. And so the, uh, the concept of works, they, they want to pervert it and twist it. A work would be anything you have to physically do. Prayer, sacraments, 
baptism, church attendance, whatever. So Michelle just wrote the gift packs work well with that. Amen. And so uh, what Michelle does, and I'm probably going to uh, spotlight her. I do every Saturday, I do a spotlight on a ministry. Probably going to do her the next th this next week or the week after. So she'll take these. I've showed them to you before. And here's one right here, actually. So she'll put them in packs like this. It's got church information, got a gospel track, candy, so you know most men are going to take it, amen. Um, you know, uh, you know, gummies that look, you know, things like that, Mentos. So she'll use these, and uh, I, I won't spoil the spotlight, but she'll go out, she'll make these up, and then they, they're sealed in a nice plastic bag, so people know they're getting something safe, and, uh, and she'll give these out. So it works very well. Uh, here's a free gift, amen. So... Um, so basically, it, it is a work, whether they say so. Naturally, you have to be firm. Wait a minute, sir. You're telling me baptism is not a work, but I've got to do it to be saved? Then that's a work. And, and I mean, they'll drive this point home, and we need to drive it home further because we have the authority of the Word of God. Amen? And though we're not out to win an argument, the Bible does say to contend for the faith, which was once delivered to the saints. Amen. The Bible says, does say, uh, Timothy chapter four, verse one or two, to preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Why? Because we have an authority. Amen. And, uh, and so again, I don't want to get off into too many tangents. I want to go to the, many of these verses, but, um, so it says, for my grace you save through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should <coughs> boast. One of my very favorite verses, I've used this to confound Roman Catholic theologians, Romans chapter 4, and again, most of you are familiar, but we are going to be going into some other verses you've not heard me use, because we're going to go in very great depth about water baptism not being necessary, amen? Romans chapter 4, verse 5, but, uh, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Wait a minute. Doesn't say works. Don't, don't go to James 2 like the Mormons do. It doesn't say that. It says faith. Well, you can't just go. Yes, you can. And we're going to look at many, many other verses that say the same thing. So they will teach, they literally teach, that if you, may, if you believe in your heart that Christ died, if you, if you trust Jesus as your Savior, that if, if you have not been dunked in the water by one of their preachers, that's the thing, then you are not regenerated, therefore you're not justified, and therefore you are not saved. That is heresy. That makes them a false religion. And I'm telling you as a brother or sister in Christ, don't back down and be intimidated. I don't care if it's a mother, a sister, a brother, a father, a spouse, whoever it is, a, a friend, a coworker, you need to be strong enough to say you're not saved then because you're adding to what Jesus Christ did. Amen. So, uh, but to him that worketh not, Romans 4, 5, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. The moment I got saved in my car, in my hot rod, 1978 Chevy Camaro, 305 V8 engine, blue custom paint job, I'm telling you, the moment I got saved, I believed on Christ in my car, I became a child of God, I was regenerated, I was given the Holy Spirit of God, uh, I, I was a child of God by faith. There's another verse, Galatians chapter 3, 26, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being what? Justified by faith. Amen. Uh, see, do not, again, I cannot emphasize enough. If you forget everything else I said today, do not let anybody take away the, the clear verses about salvation being by grace through faith by using verses that are unclear. And we're going to look at those unclear verses also. Therefore, being justified by faith, justified. Ju the old phrase is, just as if I'd never sinned. I mean, so God looks down at me. I'm justified. Now, it's a legal declaration. It's like being in a court of law, and you are guilty. And somebody comes up and says, wait a minute. And there's a couple different ways to look at that. Wait a minute. I'm going to, I'm going to be... I'm going to take your guilt upon myself and I'm going to take your payment. That's what Christ did for us. 
I used an illustration today while street preaching. I've done it before about an electric chair. It's as if you are guilty of whatever, murder, lying, whatever. And let's just say it would be, you'd be guilty and, you, and it was punishment was death and you're going to go to the electric chair. And here you are, guilty. There's no refuting it. You know you're guilty. And you're in an electric chair and the switch is about to be pulled for you to be, for your life to be gone. But somebody steps in. You know where I'm going with this. And he says, wait a minute. I'm going to take your place. Would you step out of that chair, please? And he sits in that chair. And the switch is pulled. And that man takes all that voltage through his body. He was innocent. And, and you were guilty. And he took it and he dies. So that's the cross, my friend. That's what Jesus Christ did for you. He did that for you. So what a tragedy when people want to add anything to that. And by the way, legally, if somebody was to commit a crime and somebody had been arrested and taken that punishment, do you know that that, punish, that, that crime can only be paid for one time? Isn't that amazing? So therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Imagine being justified by faith, but then you add on to it. Wait a minute, I can't have peace yet because i got to get dunked in the water. Do you realize what that does? Church of Christ, and they believe this, that you better be able to get a hold of a Church of Christ pastor because a Baptist preacher can't do it. Another preacher can't do it. Uh, for it to count as your regeneration, it's got to be a Church of Christ pastor. Boy, boy, are we sounding more like the Catholic Church than ever before. Though they would never say such a thing. So if they're not around, think about it. You get in a car accident, you have a stroke, you got minutes to live, and you're, you're you know, blood pumping out of your body in a car accident. There's nobody around. There's no ambulance. And you've got minutes to live, but you remember what somebody told you? And, uh, and, and you, uh, believe Jesus died for you. We also are going, going to trust in your water baptism. And, and there's no, there's no elder around from the Church of Christ or Disciples of Christ Church to quickly dunk you in water. According to their theology, you'd go to hell even though you believed on Christ, but you didn't believe on him completely because you were not dunked in the water. That's wicked. So, uh, look, if you would, real quickly, uh, down at v verse uh, 20, uh, 424. Um, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who is delivered for our offenses. Change that. Now, I normally don't tell people to change King James Bible. But think about it this way. Put my offenses. Not James. I'm talking about you. Think about it that way. Uh, who was delivered for my offenses, was raised again for my justification. Amen. One of my favorite verses, I'll go there, and then we're going to look at a flood of verses. No pun intended for the Church of Christ. A flood of verses. Excuse my humor. Amen. One of my very favorite passages in the whole Bible, Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, again, with the gospel here. So what is the gospel? They will get it from Acts 2.38. They'll get it from 1 Peter chapter 3, uh, 21, and so forth. Uh, Acts chapter 22, verse 16. And we're going to try with time to look at all those verses. But um, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, uh, again, uh, says this. Uh, and all things are of God who hath reconciled us to himself um, by Jesus Christ. Amen. Not by Jesus and works. Amen. Or baptism. And it's given to us the ministry of reconciliation. And again, I know I ruffle feathers when I say this. I do not use Matthew 28 as my... Uh, commission I use, Second Corinthians chapter 5, 18 through 21, to it that God was in Christ. This is the ministry we have, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now that we are ambassadors for Christ, as of God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ that be reconciled to God. But look at verse 21, for he hath made him to be sin for us. For he, God, hath made him sin, uh, Christ to be sin for us. Amen. Lord, I said on him the iniquity of us all. Uh, and then it says that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So as a justified, 
regenerated believer because of my faith, trust in Christ as my Savior. When God looks at me, he no longer sees my sin because Christ took care of that. Hallelujah. If we can't, if we can't say hallelujah over that, something's wrong. Amen. And uh, uh, so losing my train of thought here, getting derailed for a second. But um, so all my sin was placed on him. And I was given his righteousness. So when God looks down, he sees the righteousness of Christ. Amen. So we're going to look at a lot of verses here, okay? So look with me, if you would, at um, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. A lot of verses. Somebody bailed out on us. I guess somebody's got other things to do. I know it's hard uh, sometimes to sit down for an hour and listen. I've only been going five minutes, right? Just kidding. Romans chapter uh, 10, familiar passage, and I don't really use this for different reasons I've probably mentioned before, but still it gives us, uh, tells you again, remember the Gospels, first reading is 15, 1 through 5, 1 through 4, how that Christ died for our sins, was buried, uh, and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The Gospel is Christ died for your sins, amen? So look with me, if you would, at Romans 10, and it says this, uh, that if I shall confess that with thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the heart man believes. So we're familiar with this. Nothing about water baptism here at all. Uh, Paul plainly says, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. So he is made righteous the moment he believes. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, when you look at the Philippian jailer, Acts chapter 16. We're, again, we're going to look at quite a few. If I have to go over to... Uh, next week I will. I didn't plan on that, but uh, you never know. So Acts uh, chapter 16. <coughs> Acts chapter 16. Excuse my cough, just sinuses. So hopefully you're all well out there, and hopefully you are excited about what the Lord can do through you in 2024. Amen. So Acts chapter 16, and we're going to look again. Just over and over and over, so many verses that salvation is not by baptism. Amen. So for uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 30. Um, you know, my bearings here, Acts chapter 16. And again, the Philippian jailer, uh, verse uh, 30, and brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be water baptized. Now what it says, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Now notice afterward, he was saved. Amen. After, excuse me, he was saved there. Afterwards, he was baptized. Amen. Uh, look at uh, Acts uh, <coughs> uh, chapter um, 16, 32 and 33, right after that. They spake in him the word of the Lord and all that were in his house. So they continued. They're just, they, he saved once he believed. Lines up with the other scriptures. But they they give him more things, uh, not to be saved, but now as a believer. Verse 33, took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes, was baptized, he and all his straight way. Amen. So again, trying to go a little bit quicker here. Uh, I apologize for the delay there. Look at um, uh, look at First Peter chapter 3. Here's one of the ones that they use. First Peter chapter 3, and at first glance, here's the problem. There's a lot of different baptisms in the Bible, amen? Uh, at least seven or eight, some people would say ten, some would say even more than that. But look at First Peter chapter 3. This is one of the, it's not the key verse they use, but it's the second most common verse that they use in trying to prove baptism is necessary. <coughs> so, First Peter chapter 3. Um, and look at verse 21, again, due to time, says this. Uh, well, we'll start at 20. Which sometime were disobedient when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a-preparing, were in few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. Now listen to this. It's a hard text for some. The problem is, baptism does not always mean water. And just because it says water in the same passage it says baptism. People get all thrown out of a whack. Uh, they, they don't know what to do. Amen. The like figure, the like figure 
<clears throat> okay, using the ark and the eight souls saved by water as a like figure. Now, here's something to think about. Noah never got wet. The, the eight never got wet. It, it was, they didn't get dunked in the water. Amen. And it was not the water that kept them safe. It was the ark. Amen. Just like it's Christ that keeps us saved. Amen. So let's look again uh, at, uh, at this passage. So it's the like figure. Amen. First Peter chapter 3, 20 and 21 is where we're at for those who want to tune in. So this would also apply to Pentecostals who think that you have to be water baptized to be saved and so forth. So it's the second most important passage or common passage that they use. So it says the like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting of the way of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. And that's in parentheses. Notice what it says here. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So read it without the parentheses. And we'll go back to that. <coughs> The like figure whereunto even baptism doth, doth, doth also now save us uh, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now here, here, so think about this. Baptism does not always mean water. Now I want to give out a few points. I'm going to give you what I believe the answer is. Some of you may disagree. But even if you do, don't agree, it still in no way teaches water baptism saves you. Amen. Uh, so they'll use these, ter- ter- the, these verses to teach water saves. Since Noah was saved by water, take into consideration that Noah was never water baptized. Amen. Remember also that the water never touched him. He was in the ark. Amen. Thank God my safe place is in Christ. Amen. Is that not fantastic? So, hey, Enrico, how you doing? Hope you're doing well, brother. Amen. Uh, we're looking at the Church of Christ today. Amen. Um, he was saved by water in the sense that we are saved yet so as by fire at the judgment seat of Christ. The fire never touches us. Uh, also, notice that this baptism is not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, uh, but it is the answer of a good conscience toward God. And again, baptism, water baptism, doesn't even say it doesn't even wash the outside. But again, it's imperative to remember that baptism does not always mean water. Amen. And so, so just like saved doesn't always mean saved from e- e- eternal death or hell. Uh, so it's very important that we look at each text when those words are used. So, uh, so this is the here's what I want to look at. Go to, go to First Peter, First uh, uh, Corinthians chapter twelve. Sorry, doing this off the top of my head, most of it, <coughs> which you can tell there's only so much space there. Amen. It's okay to smile if you're saved. First Corinthians chapter twelve. So I'm going to give you my answer, and you may totally disagree, and that's okay. Uh, as long as you don't believe it, it has to do with water baptism, amen? So so here it says, again, if we look at it uh, outside of the parentheses, and it does not change it, when parentheses or the, quote, the marks are there, it does not, I'm not taking away from that being the word of God, it certainly is, amen? But it helps us in the understanding with that passage. So First Peter 3 says this, Like for your way unto even baptism doth also now save us, and then and he's basically and then saying not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Then it says by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. How are we saved? What's the gospel? Ties in perfectly with First Corinthians fifteen one through four. It's that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and what rose again. Resurrection. Amen. My sins not only were put on Christ, but He was buried rose again. God the Father was pleased with the ultimate sacrifice of Christ paying for my sin and for yours. Amen. But now look at first Corinthians chapter twelve, verse thirteen. It says this for by one spirit are we all baptized. This is not water baptism. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. I believe First Peter chapter uh, First Peter chapter three is talking about spirit baptism. Spirit that I once I'm saved, I'm placed in to the body of Christ. Notice resurrection uh, in baptism, First Peter chapter three. Notice um, here we're baptized into one body. Now go with me to another verse that they use. It's still not the most powerful one, but it's one that maybe people mess up. Go to Romans chapter 6. 
Again, we've got to get out of our mindset. Every time it says a certain word, it means that all throughout the Bible. So I was at a Baptist church. I was preaching for Sunday school. They asked me to come in and give my testimony and so forth. Uh, it was over in Iowa, I don't know, probably six, seven years ago. So the pastor, young man, um, which some people are younger than me, at least a few, amen, uh, he got up and he preached, and he went to Romans chapter 6. So when he went to Romans chapter 6, uh, he went to verse 3, and he said, Know ye not that as so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. And he told this church this was water baptism, folks. That's the problem. Study, 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 and study from the Word of God more than you do a commentary. Again, no offense if you look at them. Study from the Word of God. Amen. I said something to him after nicely, gently, but he got offended. Think about 1 Peter chapter 3, 21. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 12, verse 13. And now look at Romans 6, thinking of spirit baptism. Amen. Because if it is water baptism, and this is what I told him, gently, but carefully, I said, if verse 3 of Romans chapter 6, and I'll read it. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. If that's water baptism, then he would have to believe that water baptism saves him or has a part in saving him. Because I'm not placed into Christ by water baptism. I am by spirit baptism. First Corinthians 12, 13. So think about it in the sense of spirit baptism. Therefore, we're, uh, verse 3, Know ye not that so many of us were baptized, think of it, spirit baptism, not water, baptized into death, or excuse me, into Jesus Christ, were baptized, in, when were you baptized into Jesus Christ? Into the body of Christ? It was when you got saved. First Corinthians 12, 13. It wasn't when you get dunked in the water. So, so that's, an, that's an, a powerful thing to me, at least. Maybe you're sitting there falling asleep. But to me, it's powerful. That here I was, a sinner. And the moment, I mean, I'm still a sinner, but I'm a saved sinner, amen? And, when I, and I know some don't like that term. Be realistic, amen? Oh, I'm not a saved sinner anymore. I'm just saved. Well, then don't go over the speed limit, amen? Don't think hateful towards your brother, amen? So don't have pride, amen? So we're safe sinners whether you admit it or not, amen? Um, so uh, still with me, Enrico? Uh, but um, so here I was lost on my way to hell, condemned because of my sin, believed on Christ, got saved, regenerated, washed in the blood, made a child of God by faith in Christ Jesus, amen? Not by works of righteousness, which I did, and I was placed into the body of Christ. What a power. Imagine, well, I believe, but I'm not placed into that body till I get water baptized. Again, people mess up because they don't study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman, and it is not to be ashamed. Amen. Rightly divided in the word of truth. Verse 4, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Does that happen? When we're water baptized? No, we're not. And then it says this, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Notice, same thing as First Peter chapter 3, 21, baptism, resurrection. What do we have in Romans chapter uh, 6? Baptism, resurrection, just not water baptism, amen. All right, Enrico just said a big amen, Brother James, appreciate you. Uh, amen, brother. So what a blessing. Amen. Uh, here, here's what this does. Is that in a, in a way, if we could declare this being water, one, it can, it, can, it can help us some way boast of our own goodness or what we've done. And the scripture tells us in the Old Testament, man likes to boast of his own goodness. But the other thing as well is, it, and I want you to grasp it. If you forget everything, and you probably already know this, some of you are falling asleep. But if we can really get this, if we see 1 Peter 3.21, Romans chapter 6, uh, 1 Peter 12.13 as spirit baptism, because it is, it has to be, cannot be anything else. If it was, it would contradict dozens and dozens and dozens of clear verses that say we are placed into the body of Christ and we are saved by grace through faith. But here's what it does, and this is what I want you to get, uh, and, and uh, I don't say that condescendingly, my, my apologies. If we take, if, if we believe it's anything other than spirit baptism, it takes away from 
what happened when we got saved. It takes away from that the the real encouragement to walk in newness of life. Being dunked in water does not cause me to be encouraged to walk in newness of life. I mean, it could, I guess, for a little bit. But knowing I'm baptized into the body of Christ, placed into to the body of Christ by that spiritual transformation that took place, what an encouragement and a reminder. So let's allow the word of God to, to affect us and come into our life, our heart, our mind, and give him the glory. Amen. So let's, let's not take away from what happened to us when we got saved. Amen. So I'm going to look at, again, a lot more verses here. I may be going a little bit longer. I hope I'm okay with that, my friends, in Bible Baptist Temple of GMA. Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Ephesians 1, uh, verse 7. Uh, we're going to look at this verse, then we're going to go to another primary text verse they used. They're the primary text verse they use. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood. This is also repeated in Colossians one uh, fourteen. Uh, and a good way to remember that is Ephesians one seven. Double seven is what verse fourteen. So just remember Ephesians one seven, Colossians uh, one fourteen. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Amen. Now look at me at Acts chapter two. Here we go with the big verse. Amen. You know, I'm not afraid of the word of God in the sense of if it shows me something that that I don't believe or something I need to change. I, I'm, I'm, how do I say this? I respect the word of God, but I'm not afraid to find out something that would cause me to have to change my doctrine. I'm not because it's my authority and I want to be right with God. I want to, I want to line up with this book when it comes to these things and the doctrine. So I'm not afraid of Acts chapter two, verse 38. And you shouldn't be if you're a believer either. What that might mean is you might need to study. Now, some of you are doing studying by listening to this message, but, uh, but do your own study. Amen. Uh, and again, what I recommend when I first got saved, what I did, I don't want to lose the subject here. When I first got saved, I took index cards, little index cards. I think they were three by four or something like that. Three by five, I think. And what I would do is I would write down a subject like water baptism, spirit baptism, hell, Satan, the devil, uh, so forth. And I would look up every verse that I could, well, I would look up most verses, if not all of them, about the subject. Then I would, I would memorize one or two verses dealing with each subject and then write down three or four different references. So I had it up here. Amen. By the way, do it when you're younger. It'll help. Amen. Acts chapter 2, verse 38, amen? So understand, again, rightly dividing the word of truth. The cross has not been understood fully at this point, okay? It's not been understood fully. But, in fact, keep your place there. We're going to look at one of my primary verses I used to prove that. Look at Acts chapter 7. And, uh, I'm sorry, Acts chapter, uh, let's see where I'm at here. Acts chapter 8, keep your place in Acts 2, look at Acts chapter 3. So understanding, and I don't want to go too much into detail, but again, we talked about rightly dividing. You look back at Matthew chapter 16, you look at other scriptures, I think it's Luke 17, 34, I believe. When Jesus Christ explained that he was going to die on the cross, Peter didn't understand. He said, get them behind me, Satan. They're looking for a Messiah. They're looking for a kingdom and a kingdom ruler. They did not understand the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Therefore, they obviously did not preach it. Look at Matthew 10, where they're sent out, the, 10, the 12. You'll never see that's what they preached. So uh, Luke, I believe, at 1734, they understood none of these things. So here, the, the, the time of Pentecost happens. Even in the time of Pentecost, it says they were, uh, I think it's verse 8, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They're still dealing with the kingdom. Amen? But... Go all the way with me to Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 8, and the, the Ethiopian eunuch. Now, they were, and, and this will disprove their point. Because remember, their point is to prove water baptism is necessary for salvation. So, letting the Bible be your authority, look at Acts chapter 8. And we know the Philip, the Ethiopian eunuch. Uh, look at verse 35. Then Philip opened his mouth. And told him what a great football game he saw. Sorry, I just had to add that in. If you enjoy football, have at it. But 
we need to take this as an example, amen. Then Philip opened his mouth, began the same scripture, preached unto him Jesus. They went on their way, they came into a certain water, and the eunuch said, see, what is water? Here is water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? Talk about water baptism, obviously. Then Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered, said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I've said this before, I won't be too repetitive, I won't take a lot of time. He gets baptized after. Philip makes sure he understands the concept is that Christ died for your sins. But think about this, talking about dispensationalism. What Peter said there is he said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now, by God's grace, I have personally witnessed, and I'm not saying this out of pride, I would say, no doubt, many dozens, dozens, dozens of, well, tens of thousands of people, probably well over 100, 200,000, 300,000, I don't know in my lifetime, personally witnessed to them. Uh, I don't keep I don't keep track, amen? But uh, so the Lord's given me a lot of experiences dealing with people. So if somebody came up to me and somebody said, I'm saved, and I'll say, what makes you saved? Well, I be believe Jesus is the Son of God. Now, for those that are discerning, I want you to think, by that statement alone, does that make them saved? Is that the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4? Is that the gospel that was taught for somebody to believe in Acts chapter 16, uh, verse 31? No, it's not. So even at this point, chapters later, much time later, they did not understand the cross of Calvary. So now go back to Acts chapter 2, verse 38, uh, looking at it dispensationally. Uh, here's, here's what we have, and I'm going to had some things that I uh, wrote down here. Um, sorry about that. So look at Acts chapter 2, and look what he says here. So he's dealing with Israel. Amen? <clears throat> and... Um, and uh, primarily dealing with Israel, look at verse 30. So he, uh, he gives them the whole history there, talks about David, talks about the history. Uh, and then in verse uh, 29, men and brethren, let me freely speak unto the patriarch David, goes through that. Uh, God's raised up witnesses, verse 32. Uh, then look with me, if you would, at verse uh, 36. Therefore, let all the house of what Israel is talking to Israel, amen, but therefore all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. He is putting the blame on them. This is not the cross of First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He is putting the blame on them, and he's dealing with Israel. In essence, you should have known. This is in the Bible. You should have known he was Messiah. And he, it's a lot of what he's talking about in Acts chapter 2. And he puts the blame on them. This is not the gospel message of the grace of God that Christ died for your sins. It is still along the, the sense of Christ being the Messiah. And you see that in the Bible. First, they're preaching the kingdom is coming. Then they're preaching that the Messiah is coming. Then they're preaching the Messiah is here. Again, that's still their thought in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. You go to Acts chapter 2. The focus is still on Israel. And then he said this, uh, so he puts the blame on them, that whom ye have crucified, ye, he's putting the blame on them. Now, we can't say that to somebody out on the street. We could say Jesus died for you or Jesus died in your place, but we cannot put the direct blame on them for the crucifixion of Christ that they crucified him because they didn't. The Jews did and the Romans did, both Lord and Christ. He is declaring unto them, that Jesus Christ is Lord and Christ. Nothing about trusting the cross for salvation. Verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Now, isn't that the response we would like to get when we preach on the street? You say, oh, people aren't, people, people are not responding to your message. They're just getting mad or they're walking away upset or they don't like to hear what you're saying. Or they're, you know, is that's a response? That's a response. Even to the point, if you give a gospel tract to somebody, or there you go, my friend, a track pack, and you give them a gospel track or a track pack or a Bible or whatever you're giving, and they're, no, I don't want that. I don't want that. Uh, do you realize even that is a response? So they could very well be pricked in their heart. We don't know what they've been through. But it is amazing how God works. We don't know what anybody's been through. And the Spirit of God may say, let me get out of my car and give that person a track. 
Let me stop here and witness to them. And and the Lord, it's 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 divine interaction, amen. Um, so let's go back to the passage. Now, when they were pricked and heard this, they were pricked in their heart. Would be to God that people would be pricked in their heart from the gospel we are giving them. Amen. And then said Peter to, uh, said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Now notice here, they don't say what shall we do to be saved. Every word of God is pure, inspired. The word of the Lord is right. It does not say to be saved. I'm not trying to make a major point about this, but they're saying, what do we do? You've, you've said we're guilty. We crucified Christ. What are we supposed to do now? He, he, now we understand we're pricked. We understand he is the Messiah. We understand he is the coming Messiah. What do we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent, change your mind, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift <clears throat> of the Holy Ghost. So it's interesting, not preaching the cross, and even with that, baptize in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And there's two viewpoints to that. So um, let's let's look at 38. Repent, change your mind, be baptized. So even if it were referred to water baptism, no problem with it, with it being that, because that's what was used with John the Baptist and so forth. Think about it this way. The word for... Does, it has about 40 or 38 to 40 different meetings, meanings. So re repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. It's not the, the water baptism that remits the sin. It's that belief. Amen. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So again, we're looking at things dispensationally. It, this is their main verse to say you must be water baptized to be saved. And that word for remission of sins can mean, uh, you look at the, the way it can be used uh, in, sorry, I had some things written down here, the way that word can even be used in our society today. Uh, so uh, somebody could say, uh, I'm going to the Walmart uh, for a pack of uh, gum. You know, it, so the word can be used many, many different ways. So see if I can find, I had particular notes here I wanted to read to you. Uh, so if I can find them. Uh, so. If one is, unless one is prepared to say that one is saved without their sins being forgiven, then they must admit that baptism is a condition of salvation. So interesting thought there. So now. Uh, again, they're going to take an unclear verse and, and totally throw away all the clear verses. And I only gave a small amount of them. Uh, so here's another one. Go back to, to, go to Mark. This is another one of their proof texts. Mark 16. So I had somebody tell me this. It was a Pentecostal. I had only been saved a few months probably, <laughs> maybe five or six months. I'm out witnessing Newport Ritchie, Florida, going to a mall. It was great. Had young people with us. My wife and I, we go, we go out and we're witnessing. So Mark chapter 16, and they came up afterwards. And they said, we love what you're doing, but you don't believe the full gospel. And they, they brought me to Mark 16, 15. Uh, I'm sorry, 15 is uh, preach the gospel to every creature. They brought me to Mark chapter 16 and uh, went to the end of it, uh, verse 16, uh, towards the end. And he said, um, he that believe that is baptized shall be saved. They said, see, you have to be water baptized. You're not giving them the whole truth. I said, okay. I said, look at the rest of the verse. Uh, <clears throat> but he that believeth not shall be damned. What damns? Not the lack of baptism, belief. That's so clear here, folks. And so you have to look at, at Scripture comparing with Scripture. Amen? And so... It uh, looks like Michelle said amen at some point. Thank you, sis. Uh, and here's what I did. Again, I've said this before. And then I said, okay, let's look at the rest of the text. Verse seven. They brought me to 17. They said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And they said, see, you have to have these sign gifts too. Now, Church of Christ doesn't do that, but the Pentecostals do. I said, so this is, you believe this? They said, yes. I said, okay. 
Let me go down to the Walgreens and buy you a quart of oil. You drink it because it does say, say that she'll drink any deadly thing and it will not hurt you. So uh, let me see if I have some of the references here to look at uh, and just give you, uh, again, Titus 3, 5, Romans 4, 5, Romans 5, 1, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, um, Romans 6, verse 3, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remissions of sins that are past. Amen. Um, and whom we have redemption, Colossians 1, 14, through his blood. So if you say the blood of Christ is applied when you are water baptized by a church of Christ elder, then that puts the church of Christ elder in charge of the blood of Christ. If he doesn't baptize you, then I guess you're in trouble. Uh, if he isn't around, you're in trouble. If you don't access to a church of Christ pastor, then you're in trouble, and that's all just nonsense. Amen? Um, so, Revelation 1, 5, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us, and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen? So that forgiveness is taken care of by Christ. Amen? Uh, again, I won't go over it again too much, but Ephesians 1, 7. Um, so, uh, Acts 22, verse 16 is another text they use. And why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. They want to teach that as the baptizing that washes away the sins, they totally ignore that part about calling on the name of the Lord. Amen? You cannot use unclear verses to be the proof text for your doctrine. Amen? The wash away the sins is connected with calling on the name of the Lord. Amen? And that makes sense looking from Scripture to Scripture. Uh, and, and again, he is a devout man according to the law, uh, Acts twenty two sixteen. Um, let me see here. Um, just trying to get as many as you as I can for you. Uh, Ephesians one thirteen, tremendous passage. In whom he also trusted. The, the chronolog, chronolog, chronology is here. After he heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and also uh, in whom also after he believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So you believe, you've trusted. You're sealed to the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. It clearly shows us we have the Holy Ghost the moment we believe. Ephesians 4.30 as well. So um, so here's a good one too. I know I'm going a little lengthy. Some of you have other things to do like eat food, open gifts, or just uh, adore the gifts you already received. Amen. Acts 10.47. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, uh, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And they hate this passage. Uh, but by the time you get to these other ones, they're going to run out of your house or, or out of your driveway. Uh, notice they received the Holy Ghost before they were baptized. Amen. They hate to hear that. Same thing with the Pentecostals. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Again, remember the gospel. The gospel you're saved uh, from believing uh, is uh, Rome, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 1 through 4. One last thing I'll look at. I'll try to be brief is first Corinthians chapter one, verse 14. Paul said this, I thank God that I baptized none of you but Crispus and Gaius. If water baptism is necessary for salvation, that would not jive. That would not, it would be conflicting. Amen. Uh, then look at verse 16. I had baptized also the household of Sephanus. Besides, I know not whether any other. Verse 17, very important verse, for Christ sent me not to baptize, but to what? Preach the gospel totally shreds their concept that the that water baptism is part of the gospel. The focus on the cross, not water baptism. Uh, if Paul saved, if if baptism saves, how could Paul uh, have said what he did? Amen. So there you have it. A uh, lot of verses. Uh, Galatians 3.26, we are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. Uh, verse 27 ties in with what we already looked at with 1 Peter 3.21. First Corinthians twelve thirteen, Romans chapter six, three through five. For as many as you of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Amen. So there you have it. Uh, hopefully this has cleared things up. Hopefully it's been a help to you. Hopefully none of you have fallen asleep. Anybody still there? Say hello. Give me a, a bubble or whatever it is, a thumbs up. Uh, what a blessing to have the Word of God. Amen. Uh, you say, oh, it's just about winning arguments. It's not at all about winning arguments. It is to contend for the faith, which was once delivered to the saints. Amen. So to, uh, next week, we'll be looking at Islam. Uh, tomorrow, I believe I'm doing the 
uh, for Brother Dan uh, doing the devotion on Psalm, I think it's 107. Uh, so let's get the word of God out. <clears throat> we can thank God for the birth of Christ. Thank God for the cross of Christ. Thank God for the resurrection of Christ. And if you've missed everything tonight, just uh, be assured from the word of God, not from James Lyman, uh, from the clear word of God, hopefully taught, rightly divided. Uh, hopefully you all understand, convinced, not from me, but from the word of God. Water baptism has nothing to do with your salvation. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what this does? This gives him all the glory. Folks, we can't take an inch of glory if we're fully trusting him. So thank you, Bible Baptist Temple of GMA. Thank you for friends possibly in Africa listening throughout the United States, friends in Australia. Let's get the word of God out. Let's serve the Lord. Let's uh, believe what we say we believe. We say we believe people are going to go to hell without Christ. And let's start acting on it. Amen. Uh, so uh, there you have it. Have a blessed night. Thank you for your time.